All right, so before I go putting the diff mounting bolts back in and the drive shaft and all the rest of the uh, front axle parts, I want to fill the diff up, diff up with fluid and make sure it doesn't leak. But in order to do that, I need to stick this driver's side axle in. The only thing I wanted to show you on this side was when you stick this axle in, you want to make sure that you don't nick the seal or stick the axle shaft in any of the dirt in there because that would contaminate the seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this axle in and then fill the diff up and I'll wait for it to see if it leaks and then I'll go ahead and show you guys the rest of the, the other side of the truck and put that side together because it's the same for both sides. So yeah, you'll see in the further part of the video that I uh, show you how to put the seals on the axles and everything like that. And so you can see right here, just trying to slide this in without catching it on anything and grab the top of the axle and feed it in through there. All right, now that I got my axle in, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the diff up. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the diff up. Crap, that was tight. Jeez, who put that on? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Ooh, that's nasty. There we go, now we got the good angle. Yeah, really get in there. That's nice. Nice. There we go, looks like we're full. All right, I'm gonna use a three quarter inch socket and put these guys back in. These are the two three quarter inch uh, diff mounting bolts that bolt the diff to the TCB arm. There's some pretty large bolts, so you're gonna tighten these guys down pretty good. Make sure you install your breather hose back onto the diff, and it goes up in the frame here. Keep it out of the water. I come in here and Hook the drive shaft back up. Slide it into its place there. Take your U bolt, slide it into place on both sides. I'm going to take a little bit of Loctite and put it on each of the uh, fasteners. Take my bolts. Take the nuts, I mean. I want to tighten them down evenly, a little bit at a time. Once you've kind of got them snugged up, spin it around, go to this next side. Tighten these up. Get them nice and tight. Let's get the other side. Make sure those are nice and tight. All right, maybe I can show you guys how to do a U-joint here, but it's possible that I had one of them 
so seized in there, I wasn't able to get it out, so we'll see what happens. This one's not looking too happy. Well, we're already off to a bad start. Comes apart in pieces. I was gonna show you how to take this U-joint out and put the new one in, but I don't have the proper tools to do this. And the tool I did use, this uh, ball joint press, this arm actually got bent, so, and uh, it's very easy to ruin the yoke. Ask me how I know. So just take it down to a local drive shaft shop. They can do it for super cheap and super quick. So I actually wasn't able to get the U-joint out. It was so seized in there, I didn't have the proper tools to remove it. But I've got a new one and I took it down to a local drive shaft shop and they pressed it out for 12 bucks. Pretty cheap, can't go wrong there. And then you can see where the U-joint caps actually sit, it's all covered in rust. And this ridge where the clip sits is all covered in rust. So just take some sandpaper you got lying around and a pick. And you're gonna come in here, clean it all out real good with the sandpaper. These areas where the U-joint cap sits and then get your pick tool and just kind of scrape all around here to get all the rust out and that'll make it so your u-joint doesn't get seized in there next time and it'll be that much easier installing it all right now that my workbench is clean and these parts are clean new clips here joint. Take one cap out. Take the other cap out. Slide it in there like so. Like that. Before I put this cap on there, I'm going to Take some grease, give it a nice liberal coating all around, prevent anything from rusting, and make sure that the cap slides on there smoothly. Now when you're putting this in, you gotta line it up with the pin on the U-joint. Get your cap on there, kinda line up your U-joint. I'm gonna tap it all the way around evenly and slide your cap in so you can tap that side in a little more grease Grab a little socket here so I can expose the groove there. And just come in with your clip and some pliers. Might have to pop the clip in. There you go. And then flip it around. Try to expose the groove. Sometimes it takes a little persuading. Sometimes. Get it in its slot there. Now it's got a nice coating of grease on it. Pop our caps off. Got the caps off. I'm gonna slide one end in there, like so. Get one of your caps started. 
Try to line the U-joint up as best you can. And I'm gonna slide that U-joint, slide it into place there. Come around and get this cap. Clips in. Get your last clip in there. You got the U joint installed. Next thing you want to do is just make sure that the spline here just goes into the slip shaft. Make sure it's nice and clean. If not, I'm going to feed the axle through here there we go let's get this slip yoke put in here try to line up the uh Sub shaft here with the axle. There we go. Get the splines lined up. Shove that back on. And the boot just slides right over there. I'm gonna go ahead and just use a big zip tie. Next thing you're going to want to do is get your spindle prepped. We've got the axle in there. Still have to put our seals on the axle. Just going to clean all the crud off of here. All right, now that we got our axle in and we just got to put the seals on the axle, we're going to change out the spindle bearing that's in here. There's a needle bearing in there. And I already removed it, but there's a seal that goes right around here it would look like that we're gonna press that in after we get this bearing out so the way I do this is I'm gonna flip the spindle over I'm gonna use a pry bar and a hammer I'm gonna come down through the spindle here and I'm gonna catch the edge of that I'm gonna catch the edge of that spindle bearing with my pry bar there Catch the edge of it. Get slipped off of it there. Hit one side of it. Go to the other side. Go to the other side. Keep hitting it until you slowly start to work it out. You can see I've almost got the bearing out, but it's flush now with the spindle. So what I'm gonna do is, take two pieces of steel, and get it supported like that. And that'll come the rest of the way with the pry bar. go and you're gonna save this because it's useful for putting the new one back in so make sure if you're punching this thing out and you make a little nick in the surface there you want to get that file that off or something so that the new bearing doesn't catch that edge a little sanding bit knock those edges down All I did was just do a little bit 
just to knock that little edge off. Just the tiniest bit, just to knock any of those little edges off. Just come on the top of the spindle here, a little bit of scotch bright. Make sure you knock down any high spots where the seal might catch or something like that. Just trying to do any of the prep now so that when we get the bearings and seals in there, we don't have to clean anything and get anything dirty. Just want to go around these edges where the seal are, kind of scuff them up, get knocked down any high spots. So you want to clean the ceiling surface here where the inner bearing rides and this is where the outer bearing rides and then spray your threads off where your wheel bearing goes on. Now that everything's cleaned up, take a little bit of grease, I'm gonna put it where this spindle bearing is gonna go in. And we're gonna take our new spindle bearing and get it started like that. And then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this piece of steel Kind of set it over it like that. And I'm gonna be able to use that to hammer the, the bearing in nice and even. You can see it's going in already, nice and even. Just kind of tap all the way around. Now that it's that steel is bottomed out like that. Or you could probably just use this 32 millimeter socket and kind of you can hear how it kind of got louder there. It means that it's bottomed out. Now we're going to go ahead and take our seal. We're going to put a little bit more grease right around this edge here. So the seal sits in there nicely. Now, it's greased up. I got the seal started in there. Just sitting like that. There we go. That did the job. Get it all the way down. I'm not going to go anywhere. Take a little more grease and just get some on the seal here. So when you go to slide it over the axle, it'll slide nice and smoothly. You're actually going to want to take a decent little bit of grease and you're going to want to kind of almost pack this like it was a wheel bearing. Just kind of get some in the channels and stuff there so that now that our seal is installed and our bearing is installed and we have it nice and packed full of grease, we're going to go ahead and take our axle seal. This is going to go on like this. Now that our spindle is all prepped up here, you want to make sure you just take this is all clean. Put a nice coating of grease all along this edge here, on the face of this, a little extra on the bolts, and then around the axle shaft here for your seal. We're gonna go ahead and take our seal and slip it on like there. It will actually get pressed in when this gets pushed on. So, go ahead and take our spindle, slide it on to the axle like so. Careful with the seals. And there's a special orientation of this spindle. Make sure that axle seal is in place. So when we press the hub on, it pops the seal into the correct spot. So once that's, in, once that's in place and your seal 
looks good and it's gonna slide over the axle when you go to tighten this down. You go ahead and start your bolts, start your nuts over the studs here. I'm just gonna tighten these down with the impact real quick just to get it snugged up. Snugged up, the axle seal still isn't in the quite correct position. So we'll stick a pry bar in there. Kind of force the seal to where it's supposed to be. Now it looks to be all the way on there. All right, now that our seal is pressed into its correct location, we're gonna go ahead and take a torque wrench here, tighten these down to 50 foot pounds. Do a crisscross pattern. wheel seal get my seal puller in like that and there we go you got a wheel seal you're gonna have your inner wheel bearing you got the seal and the bearing out and I don't have a wheel I don't have a bearing race kits to uh, press these in and out. So I'm just going to come in here with the pry bar and cut your edge on here and uh, try to get these races out of here. You just want to be careful not to scratch the sides of where the race sits in. So when I work each side One side, go back to the other side. Work your way around it. That one comes out. Now we're gonna flip it over. Make sure we don't stick our rotor in that. All right, now that we got those bearing races pressed out of there, we are gonna clean some of the old grease out of here. The little spots over here where I nicked it with the pry bar. You can see a couple little spots where I nicked it with the pry bar. You can see those little marks. And then the actual part where it sits flat, right there. See there's a couple nicks there. And then this part where the race actually seats down and bottoms out, you can see there might be like a little nick there. So just make sure you file those away before you punch the new one in. I got the hub all clean, got my new bearings ready to install them. I'm gonna take some grease, put it around where the races go, just so everything gets nice and lubricated. So I'm working on the outer race right now. Take your wheel bearing and 
open it up. You want to set your bearing off to the side so it doesn't get any dirt in it. And lower that guy down in there. I didn't have a, I really should have bought a seal and bearing driver set, but I just took the old race and set it down over top of it and take this coupling out of my uh, ball joint press kit. Use this other piece for my ball joint press kit. You want to make sure that it's totally seated. You don't want it, any gap between the, hu the hub where the race bottoms out. You can always look from the back side to make sure that it's seated properly. And once again here, I'm going to use an old race to get, I'm just going to get it started here. Nope. I'm going to use this and this to do this. So I can hit it right in the middle to get it started. Now it's kind of started. I can kind of work it down. And press the way in. All right, first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take some grease and I'm gonna shove some into the pocket of the hub so there's some extra grease floating around in there just below this inner wheel bearing race just packing some grease in that little pocket there uh, that's full I'm gonna take a big glob of grease get it in my hand there I'm gonna take my bearing I'm just gonna kind of do this motion in my hand and you'll start to see the grease popping through there. That's when you know those ones are packed. So just keep doing that and moving the bearing around and until you get all of those pockets to have grease coming through them. And once you've got all that done, your bearing should be nice and packed and it'll be ready for installation. This bearing is nice and packed well. I'll make sure that the uh, race is nice and coated in grease. Also where this seal is gonna go in, put a nice coating around that. We're gonna lay our bearing in there. Take our new seal, lay it down just like that. Come back on top with the uh, square sock that I got here. This bearing can be kind of tight, or the seal can be kind of tight going in, so be careful with it. Don't get it started unevenly. got our bearings installed and our hub packed and I got a little bit of grease on the spindle there for when I go to install the hub just be careful if your bearing tries to fall out there we go Jeez. Throw it back in there. Like so. 
Now what you're going to want to do is take your wheel bearing nut, the one that has a little nipple on it, and that's going to face you. You want to get that started on the threads of the spindle. Make it a little easier. Just going to stick it in the socket here. Should be a little easier to get started on the spindle there. There we are. I'm going to torque this down to 50 foot pounds. While I'm torquing it down, I'm going to spin the hub. Get it down to 50 foot pounds. All right, now that we're torqued down to 50 foot pounds, I'm going to loosen it 90 degrees. Take my socket out, then I'm going to take my washer here with this little indent right there. It goes on the keyed part of the spindle. What I'm going to do here is just find the little nipple on the ring. You can see it down there at the bottom right there. So get your washer in there. and get that on the keyed part and you can see that doesn't want to fit over so I'm gonna flip it around which makes the holes offset a little bit and I still can't still can't get it on so what I'm gonna do is You never want to loosen it. I'm going to tighten it just a hair. There we go. Now the nipple sits over or sits in the washer. Now we can go ahead and put our outer wheel nut on. I'm going to take my outer wheel bearing nut. Let it sit in the socket, get it started. And I'm gonna torque this outer wheel bearing nut down to 200 foot pounds. go. Next thing we do here is take our four wheel drive hub and we're going to slip that into place. I'm going to go ahead and install the snap rings for the four wheel drive hub and with all the new seals on it had a little trouble with the axle shaft exposing the groove here for the c-clip so I just shaved down my inner spline piece for my four-wheel drive hub, which is probably not a legitimate thing to do. So, I didn't think that was worth showing you guys. Take my clip here. Good idea to get some snap ring pliers. And take my outer clip get it in there like that your locking cap has a little dowel on it that fits in one of the holes here
Don't want to strip it, so these things don't need to be very tight. Next thing I'm going to do is come in here and uh, break loose my brake line here. But if you don't have one, that's a good, I just don't have an 11 mil one. It's just a good way to get my brake line loose here. You got to pull this clip off. Get that clip out of there. And then we'll be able to pull the brake line out of there. Goes a little bit to give the seal a crush down, and that's all you need. Before we put our brakes together, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this rotor up, make sure there's no grease. I'm gonna go ahead and get this caliper loaded up. You got your slide. This is where the pins slide on. It's not a bad idea to come in here with a little sandpaper. Next thing I'm gonna do is just get a little bit of grease around the face. This is caliper grease. Spot you wanna put it is right on this flat lip right here. Take my brake pads, you got the ears on it, and go down. around there we go flip this guy over we'll take our spring here there's gonna be two little edges down on each side see how it has dipped down like that slip the edge into it might get it a little farther past than where it's supposed to so we can get this one in. I'm gonna do the same thing to these edges where the caliper slide on. Make sure there's nothing, any old grease left in here. Now that we're happy with that, I'm gonna take more of this brake grease, put a generous little amount into these channels clean and lubricated. I'm going to come in with the caliper here. Might be a little hard to slip these pads over. Be a little easier to show you on this top one. Like I said, there's two different sides to it. The top side is a little bit smaller of a gap. The bottom side's Got a bigger gap. The bigger gap goes on the caliper. You can kind of angle it like that to try and get it started. And I'll just tap it in with the hammer. And the next thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and take our banjo bolt for our caliper. I'm going to slide a copper washer onto it and then put our brake line, put the bolt through the brake line. And the brake line is going to face outwards like so. Slide your copper washer under so that there's one on each side. Now that I've got the bolt started, I'm just going to give it a little tighten. Get those crush washers seated down. Doesn't have to be Gorilla, hold strength tight. Just enough to crush those washers down. All right, well, I hope you guys found this video pretty informational for you. This was my first time doing a front end on one of these, and I definitely learned a lot. There was definitely some parts that I had some trouble with and couldn't get through, but I got through it, and the truck's back together. Last thing I need to do is bleed the brakes, but I'll be showing that in my next video. I'm going to put a new master cylinder on it and show you how to bleed the brakes. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.
And make sure you go and watch my next video on the brakes being bled because I'm going to have a lot more going on once this truck is off the lift. So stay tuned, guys. Thank you for watching.